Alrighty guys, welcome back to my silly channel. No hokey pokey, crazy Camaro man, none of that crazy stuff today. We're going to talk about probably my, I ain't going to say it's controversial, one of my most commented videos telling me everything I did wrong when I put subframe connectors under my car. And the reason a lot of people say it was wrong is because I did it on a two post lift and they're saying you're supposed to have it uh, where the suspension is loaded and the car is sitting on, you know, like a drive on ramp. That wasn't in the cards for me, so that's why I didn't do it. I would have gladly done that if I had that available, but my brother-in-law's got a lift. It's free. You know, I'm all about free. Um, thing about that, drive on, that is absolute true. It is best to put on subframe connectors with the suspension fully loaded and the car sitting level. Now, if your suspension is not level, what does that mean? Does that mean the car's twisting? Because they're saying that I welded my car twisted. And I'm going to read you two comments. And, you know, the bad thing about um, comments is and anything on the internet, you can say something and it's like, oh, be quiet, you know. I say that like that. You you know, I was just saying, ah, you're just messing, be quiet. But if I say, if I just type be quiet down, what happens? Somebody reads it, be quiet. That's how somebody sees it and they see me as rude. So, you know, I don't know what intention, what force of anger or, or attitude these people had, but... um. Here's the comments. I got 22 comments. This video is hitting right around 3,000, maybe a little less, about 2,700 it looks like. Somebody said, great add-on, a uh, guy from Canada. Uh, somebody's like, yeah, I put those on mine. This is one issue. This is JC's Hobbies and Recreation. He said, the car needs to be supported by the suspension when you weld the subframe connectors onto the car. By picking it up on the lift and letting the suspension hang, the body and frame are twisted. By welding in the subframes with it, you just twisted and made that twisted, made that twist permanent is what he says. I strongly disagree because of the subframe connectors I use. Now, here's the big deal. If you are going through the floorboard subframe connectors, you better have that car dead even. I 100% agree. You've got to have that car sitting dead even. Make sure the car ain't even twisted no matter what you got it sitting on. You can have it sitting on some cribbers. You know, I got some cribbers. You can have it sitting on those and lift it up and still have it crooked if you're not careful. So yeah, you still run that risk, but yes, if you're doing a through the floor subframe connector where you have to notch out all the way down, you are welding like eight or nine different points on each side the same. Now as far as the twisting goes, twist in my opinion is like this. You know, you can do an arch, that's an arch, that's a droop, you know, where it's like this, but twisting is twisting. And these are SR subframe connectors. They are the cheapest one cheap one. All I wanted was something to make it a little more sturdy. I'm, it's not a race car. It never will be. I have raced it on the drag strip, but I'm going to get down here and we're going to look at what these are. These are one inch by two inch cheap metal pieces. And you can see it right there. Let me get you the light. But here's what we got. That is a one inch by two inch piece of metal. And I could bend that thing over my knee. That's that's how that's how that thing is not that strong. Now, if you're going with a one and a half or one and a half, yeah. But here's the deal. Was it true or not that I welded? Is it true that I welded my car twisted? That's the question. No, because when I put it back down on the ground, the door frames were the exact same. If I had to twist it somehow, wouldn't it have opened up my gap right here? This gap. Wouldn't this gap over and right now is not a good time to show you because it's, it's on four jack stands that are under there. But you know, and, and one of them's not at the same height. But my doors are the exact same. When we lifted it up, we made sure we hit all four corners just as far out close to the wheels as we could. And we lifted the car up, made sure everything hit. We actually put some spacers under two of them to make sure everything went up straight. And that piece of metal right there, if I can bend that piece of metal over my knee, I'm pretty sure that a 3,000 pound car is going to push that and flex that thing back down to where the car's used to sitting, not to where the beam. I did not weld my car straight by putting that in because here's, here's something we need to look at. There's my welds. And I had one guy said, I need to take a welding class. And I agree. And somebody said that they guarantee my welds did not make it past test drive. Well, there's a weld. This is a year and a half, almost two years going on. There's a weld it's holding. I welded the cross section, which bolts to your seat bolts. I welded that to the subframe bar. And then I put some plates on this one. You can see that all of my welds are holding. They are not good looking welds. I have never taken a welding class. One guy said I need to take a welding class. I disagree with him. I need to take a welding semester. That's how bad at welding I know I am, but I'm an excellent grinder. That's what matters. <laughs> some people say it's not how you start, it's how you finish. 
And that's the deal. All of my welds, every one of them, there's one over there, one over there, they are all holding. And like I say, let's think about the flexing in, in general. If, if the car was welded and it was twisted, it can't twist with the two bars. You understand that? You know, if you've got a bar over here and a bar over here, if one of them's like this and one of them's like, like this, that don't matter. The car doesn't care because there's nothing holding them across. Now, if you weld in a four-point, let me get you in light. If you weld in a four-point or a six-point roll cage, eight-point, whatever, you know, one of those, you're, you're now, you've got your bar subframe connector here and you, you weld something here and here. Yes, that bar will not move. So if the car is crooked, wherever it goes, that's where the car's going to sit back down. But if that's not there and that thing can flex by hand, guess what that subframe connector did whenever I sit it back down? It welded. So, no, the car is not twisted. Not with these. If you got a stiffer one or you got the ladder set up or a through the flame, through the, um, frame sub connector, yes, you need to have your frame done. If you're doing the little cheap SR, I just wanted something to stiffen the car up just a little bit and basically you're welding the front and the back. You are connecting them. You are not, this is not a subframe chassis holder. That's not what this does. It welds the front to the back and that little cross beam right in there, you bolt that down, that kind of stiffens up that middle section. It keeps the car from, you know, doing that. That's all it is. Um, like I say, the other guy said I needed a welding class. No, I need a welding semester. I know I do. Uh, and that's about it. You know, it was just a lot of good comments. And, and I appreciate those guys saying that because if you do have access to a drive-on ramp where all the wheels are loaded, make sure your suspension is done. And then you'll know you're straight. That, that, that is probably the best way to do it if your car isn't warped. If you know your car's got some sort of warpage or something going on in it, then you got to get your car straight first, then weld those on. So that's it. You know, it was um, my choice to do the two-post lift because it was free. It was easy. I picked a flimsy, not the greatest subframe connector to use because it was cheap, and I just wanted to stiffen up the car just a little bit. I wanted to connect my frames. I did not. It's not, a, like I say, this is not a subframe car holder bar that thing does not hold this car where the car where it's going to be that little one by two is not going to hold 3,250 pounds of metal from doing what it's going to do if it was a two by two or three by three possibly but that's the thing so if you're doing subframe connectors through the floor the uh, stifflers makes a nice set maximum motorsport you know there's really long if i'd have done the long ones i would have done it w where it was loaded i would have but with this i knew i was just going to be connecting the front point and the back point and then bolting it together right in the middle with the seat um my welds have held up so there's two people who said you know well one said i need a weld class and i agree with him 100 percent. the other one said my welds probably didn't hold through the test drive going on two years and not one single weld has broke so i'm i'm proud of that uh, I did find out my wire speed was too fast because I was talking with my welder at work that works out of our welding shop and he, he, he was looking, I showed him some footage that did not make that video of the subframe connector video. He said, yep. He said, your wire speed's too fast. That's why it's, it's balling up before you can move your thing. He said, you either you're going to have to learn how to move faster and then you're not getting as thick a weld on or slow your wire speed down and just slowly move and let it feed in instead I was letting it ball, letting it gum drop up and then I had to grind all that down. But there you go. I am happy with my subframe connectors, even if I did it the way that's not the best, because it was the way that was the cheapest. I got like $65 in the entire thing. I think it's what the SR were from. I don't remember who I even ordered them from. I think it was off of eBay. Not sure. I know LMR carries some. Uh, CJ Pony Parts carries more SR parts than I don't know if LMR does or not, but you know, you got all the different, there's all different way, routes to go. And if you've got a welding shop, I could have easily have took a piece of one by two scrap. If I, I you got to wait for scrap, usually you don't find scrap that big, but could have done that, but I didn't. But that's the deal there. Um, on the update on this car, on the T-top car, I've got a guy going to rebuild the carburetor for me. The rebuild kit just came in yesterday, so I'm going to pop the 600 off of the T-top car and put the 750 back on it so I can at least drive it around in the yard and tinker and probably get it in there and start doing some brakes and, and trying to get the brakes working. Then we'll start seeing if it's going to cool, warm, how it's going to act just running and driving around. And that's about it. I might start tinkering, putting, putting around on that car. Looking forward to it. And that's it. So fix to get that rebuilt. That's the update on that. Do your subframe connectors the best way you can for what suits your purpose. I'm not going to sell the car, so I'm never worried about anybody fussing that I did a horrible job on it. It's my car. So, that's that. I appreciate everybody who watches my silly channel and listens to my rant. And I appreciate all the comments, whether whether I agree with them or not. Or, or if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. And I agree. The best way to do this is to pull it up onto a drive-on ramp and do them then. 
I, I totally agree with that. Um, but with the SRs, the, the cheap metal, no. It, it, you can and you should if you can. But if you can't, do what you got to do. God bless you all. Peace.